You want to try and harness all that insight that you get when you hire smart people who live the problems that you're hoping to solve and make sure they have the resources and support to thrive, right? 10 minutes, two change makers. I'm not just gonna sit down and let this happen again. One sweet solution. Join me, Amelia Hoy, in conversation with Tony's favorite change makers. Hey, Amelia, how are you? In a five-part series that addresses shaking up the status quo. If this is the future that we're headed towards, holy crap. And addressing some of society's issues. Smallholder farmers across the African continent lack the equipment they need to fully cultivate their land. Agricultural equipment is expensive, finance is virtually non-existent. That's why Jaheel Oliver created Hello Tractor, a platform that shares agricultural equipment and tractors, connecting farmers who don't have access to a tractor with farmers who do, thus helping out both parties. We're gonna speak to Jaheel in Nairobi. I can't wait to see what he has to say. Hello, Jaheel. Hey, Amelia, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thanks for chatting with us. So Jaheel, let's uh, backtrack a little bit. And um, I would love to know how you got into this business and what motivated you from, from early on. Well, I started my career in, in finance in the US and didn't necessarily find that work the most fulfilling. I'm not motivated by money. So I left my career in, in banking. Actually, during the financial crisis, I decided to, to up and quit. I read a book by Muhammad Yunus on microfinance uh, called Banker to the Poor. That opened my mind, my awareness to opportunities to use my skill set in finance to support uh, low income populations who have traditionally been forgotten. That led to working in agriculture, still within the vein of finance. Mm -hmm. um, which led to Hello Tractor. Hello Tractor is an agricultural technology company that connects small farmers who typically struggle with working the land that they have access to because they don't have the labor that they need, nor do they have access to equipment uh, to maximize this land. And um, wanting to support farmers with access to mechanization so they can improve their yields, become more productive, earn more income, and hopefully lift themselves out of poverty through that increased income. Now, it's a pretty radical change going from uh, yeah. deep, deep finance, so to speak, uh, <laughs> to, uh, to tractors. What, what drives you and what keeps you motivated on this journey? I want to prove to the world that there's a ton of talent in these underserved markets. There's a ton of opportunity. You know, we hire all of our team from the data scientists to the software engineers. We hire them locally from, you know, markets where people generally don't think of sourcing that type of talent. And I want to put those young people up against the best engineers from Stanford and all these great places who generally get thought of as the brilliant people. And I want them to beat them. <laughs> I want them to outperform and I want them to, sh to be a really a beacon for the, the world to see that you all need to pay attention to what's happening on the continent, right? We have an entire continent of countries that are thriving despite zero support. As far as, as making these communities better, where does that desire come from? I don't know. I always thought it would be really cool to do something that could provide real benefit to groups of people that the world has largely forgotten about. And I know what it's like to be one of those people. You know, when I started my career, I was making pretty good money. It didn't make me any happier than I, than I was when I was on the east side of Cleveland making no money, yeah. right? Because there's not a whole lot of support for people in, on the east side of Cleveland. And I know, you know, how important it is to have, to be in a community of people that support each other and, um, what just a, a small amount of investment and interest from the outside can do to transform these communities. Banks don't think about how can I lend into this community. Tractor manufacturers don't think about how can we support these, these farmers so they can have access to this equipment. So being a, a bridge um, and providing my background, I thought I could imagine doing anything, anything else. 
Where is your position in empowering and where is your position in stepping away? I think it's a really a relevant question whenever we look at um, initiatives that want to empower communities when uh, right. the people who are driving the initiatives are coming from outside. How do you find that balance? Well, we work in agriculture where relationships matter. The way our entire business is structured, it's all about localizing our technology, localizing our solution country by country. It was built by people who live and experience these problems firsthand um, so that it fits the context because there's a ton of nuance across all these different agricultural communities. The role that we play is that of enablement. So I don't ever take control of anything, right? I barely have control over myself. My job is to make sure these people's salaries get paid. My job is to make sure that they have access to opportunities to learn and grow in their profession, whether it be within Hello Tractor or outside of Hello Tractor. And then give them a platform to display that brilliance to the world. As far as what Tony's is doing, that one of the really yeah. important things in creating that community and outreach is to also really know what the communities actually need before just providing mm -hmm. a service that you assume that the yeah. community needs. Well, it's funny. When I started the business, we had we were fortunate on one level, at least, to have a lot of support from subject matter experts, mostly from the West, mostly from these you know, Ivy League schools, right. and top companies. And we got all this advice from them and built a strategy and then came, went to Nigeria and really would just banged our head up against a wall for about a year. Yeah. Because all that crap didn't matter. It sounded good. It looked good on paper, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, folks with business school degrees are really good at eloquently talking about BS, right? right. <laughs> but your customers actually are the ones that ha should have the loudest voice. And, and we found that out the hard way. Mm. Um, so we didn't come with a, a package solution that worked at all. In fact, it was, um, we ended up completely dismantling what we thought was a solution and being responsive to our customer and building around those conversations that we were having with those customers. And that was a that was a very difficult lesson for us, um, mm. but a necessary one. Tell us a little bit more about the bus tours and the awareness programs. Well, this is a part of the business that I'm really excited about. My uncle used to be a, a tractor technician. We're talking, um, you know, early 20th century. Mm. Um, and he would volunteer on the weekends at Tuskegee University. He was based out of Alabama. Okay. And, um, Tuskegee being a historically black college, exactly. he would volunteer his time to train uh, farmers who were sharecroppers and in some instances ex-slaves on the benefits of mechanization, mm -hmm. right? Talk about how to improve your yields, how to, how to reduce drudgery on the farm. Of course, I thought maybe we can do something similar. Mm -hmm. So now we've created our own farmer movable school where we go around in advance of the season, educate farmers on the benefits of mechanization, We've invited our friends as well, so other companies, um, to talk about things like the benefits of using improved seeds, mm -hmm. fertilizer. We're talking big companies here, right, who are also participating um, to support the farmers while we all kind of learn together about best practices within the legacy of my great uncle, who used to be a, a technician at John Deere. Mm. And now I'm working with John Deere in a slightly different capacity yeah. um, on a different continent. I think that's just a, such a cool story. Yeah. It's it's a complete full circle. Yeah. Really interesting yeah. also a, a conversation that that I that's been had here as well is, you know, coming from the legacy of your your great uncle, you grew up in a household of Pan-Africans. Is it is it that these great causes choose us or are we born yeah. to do what we end up doing? What's your take on that? Yeah. Wow, that's an existential one. I don't know. I, I will say that at times, it does feel that the universe is conspiring to put me on this path to do this work. And I've been surrounded by amazing, brilliant people who are incredibly supportive. Mm -hmm. And at times, I feel like I'm on autopilot and just 
going with the flow. I think it's unfortunate that, you know, oftentimes, um, you know, as the founder, you get kind of pushed kind of to the front. And I'm, th- I'm always thinking in the back of my mind, I haven't really done anything. I got a, I got a team of 20 incredible people that support me, mm-hmm. countless uh, companies, organizations, investors, donors, multilateral institutions. I mean, I can keep going. Yeah. That just love what we're doing and they support us for reasons that are beyond me, right? right. But I get the credit, so I'll take it. And I'll take the chocolate bars. <laughs> yeah. They don't get that. <laughs> Thank you so much for your Thank time, you. Jaheel. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you for participating in our conversation with Jaheel. Rather than bringing a solution to a community by listening to them, the solution was actually given to him. But a 10-minute conversation is not enough to create sustainable change in a society, so please go to our website and read more about how you can support Tony's mission and other sweet solutions in the series.